Okay, this is the uh, live version of what I created from the drawings that uh, that I've been posting. This is the actual PVC back iron adjustable height uh, armature stand that I created out of PVC pipe. And uh, get a little closer here so you can see how the base is done. And uh, see if I can show you what I did here. This is the T-shaped piece that you see with the other uh, threaded fitting already on there. I've got some extra things on there I'll explain in a minute. But I wanted to show you if you can possibly see the inside has been smoothed out so that that ridge in there is gone. It's totally smooth on the inside so that you can very easily do this. And I left the, the PVC pipe up here about two feet long so that I could use most any size sculpture. But this slides, as you can see, really easy up and down. And then uh, what I did is I just had this little threaded knob on hand. And I drilled holes according to the size of the threads on this. I sized this and then created, in my case, five thirty seconds holes. And I did that about every inch so that I can put this in here. See if I can do this with one hand. There we go. And it, uh, I really don't want it to tighten per se. I just want it to slip in there and, and fit nice and snugly. But I can actually pull that out straight out. It's not really depending on the threads at this point. So there, that's back in there. And then what I wanted to show you is this is fixed on a melamine piece of shelving, PVC, I mean uh, particle board rather. And on the bottom I have rubber feet to keep it from slipping around. But this can just as easily be put on a Lazy Susan so that it will spin th freely. Either way works. What I want to show you now is uh, the different fittings that, that I created with different options. Uh, the way that's most common is a threaded rod which goes into the back of usually a figure that people are making. And this is just a, a, a piece of the PVC that I cut off of this full length piece here. And it just slips freely in there. I can tighten it up so that it doesn't turn. And then uh, this nut would be epoxied into the armature. I'm going to show you in a moment how that works. But that's, that's one method. That's just a bigger heavy duty threaded rod. I think it was a bolt. And uh, this is a smaller one. And this is the epoxy putty uh, that's filling that piece of tubing. And just like the other one, just goes right in there. And I'm going to show you a couple of different armatures that I created uh, that fit both the threaded rod and then this I'm going to show you. This is an example of uh, you know just square tubing in this case it's brass tubing that I epoxied in there works the same way fits on there and this is just a larger version for uh, a heavier duty sculpture in this case it's plastic square tubing they both do the same thing this is very similar to what you saw in the, the drawings. What I have done on this one 
instead of just leaving it plain wire is I have used epoxy putty to uh, create a kind of a mannequin so to speak but uh, it's just bulked out to uh, uh, make it easier to form the the figure but what I've done here is in the midst of the wire I used epoxy putty to put in that nut which then works on this threaded rod okay this is the uh, version of the armature with the nut in the back that fits this threaded rod the smaller of the two that I just showed you and uh, that just kind of goes in there firmly you don't want to screw it in too tight or it'll pop the nut right back out and then this fits into the armature stand as I said this comes out like that and fits in nice and snugly into the armature and then you can put that as tight as you want uh, into the armature uh, back iron as sometimes they call it but that means that I can turn this armature all different angles so I can work on it the nice part about it that I really like is I can take this out and hold this in my hand and work on it and turn it all different angles if I need to and then put it back in the stand either until I work on it the next time, you know, to kind of keep it from laying on a surface and, and uh, getting ruined. It, it holds it up off of uh, the surface. And another option is the kind of armature fitting that fits or works with these pieces of square tubing. Now this is not an original arrangement uh, with me. I, I saw this on a YouTube video. This is stiff armature wire and what I've done is I've used epoxy putty to create detachable limbs with smaller pieces of square tubing. This just fits together and all, all four limbs work the same way. I'm going to hold that a little bit closer to the camera See, that's the smaller piece, and this is the larger piece. I'm going to put a reference on uh, YouTube to show you where to find how to build this kind of an armature. And there's the uh, same type of thing for the head and neck. The way this works, there's a couple of different versions. This is, would be the smaller size, and it's kind of important to use the larger of the two telescoping uh, pieces of tubing in the torso of the the figure because then you can hide that inside if you were to put the smaller one it would have to protrude out enough that a larger piece would fit onto that so it's easier to have the socket so to speak inside the the torso of the armature like you see here and I'll show you how this works in just a second um, what I showed you a moment ago that I fixed up, in, in this case I used a piece of brass tubing. I could have just as easily used the corresponding square plastic tubing. Uh, this is what I had on hand. But this fits right into there. And then you can put this armature stand uh, to work for you, like this. And the advantage to this is you, know, you can turn the, the armature in different directions and work on the sculpture or I can pull this off hold the the sculpture in my hand and work on it the other advantage to this kind of an armature is if I want to work on the torso and the legs are in the way let's say I have partially finished an arm that's why I have these other pieces epoxied onto the T because what I can do is I can detach the arms and the legs and put them in the little holder, put them in the holder like that so that the arms and legs 
are out of the way. Let me turn this so that you can see. So the arms and legs are out of the way so I can work on the torso freely without the limbs getting in the way. So I've got that rigged up to hold those up off the surface so that they don't get flattened on one side or, or ruined. And then if I need to, I can put them back in one at a, one at a time. But um, see what I've done is I've taken epoxy putty and I've just epoxied square pieces of the plastic tubing as just little holders. And if I need to, I can work on the, the limbs right on here if I want to uh, or put them back. And then this other piece works for larger sculptures with larger armatures. Uh, I went ahead and labeled this so that I'd remember. It says a quarter inch on here. And I can just trade that out when I do a larger sculpture uh, if I want the same detachable limbs. Or if I want a simpler armature, uh, like a larger version of this other one that I showed you a moment ago with the threaded back, then I can use this, this larger bolt and epoxy this nut that you see here, it wouldn't be on the rod. It would this nut would be epoxied into the back of the armature, just like I did with that one, just for a larger uh, armature. I think this is more than adequate for most people. But as I said in the, in the slides here, I put this together for about ten dollars, and the most expensive piece was the flange on the bottom which I think was four or five dollars and then uh, just one piece of PVC pipe worked fine and uh, and that's about it so it's ready to for me to start making a sculpture so that's how you make an adjustable height detachable PVC pipe armature stand